We are not imprisoned by our circumstances, but by our thoughts. A man in prison can be more free than the one who is enslaved to addiction, to approval or pornography or their drug of choice. Sometimes the answer, the key is right in front of you. But you scream and you try a thousand other ways to get out because you want a different way. You still long for freedom, but you're trapped. My name is Danny Ray. In this series, we're going to look at the lies we believe and how these lies hinder us from becoming the person God designed us to be. Deception. This is a series about the lies we believe and how those keep us from becoming the person that God's designed us to be. You might feel like you're in the middle of a mess. You might feel like you were trapped. This episode is about just that. How does God free us? Like the night didn't start out like this, but things got a little crazy. And right now you're gonna see how. So Caroline, you're in high school, but with you know junior hires, as, as they come out of elementary, they're in junior high, moving into high school. How's that happen where people get trapped, they feel stuck? I think that oftentimes it's a lot of curiosity that um, people go into worldly desires because they're they have this whole new world that's opened up to them as they grow older and they just venture into the unknown, leaving God behind and not joining with Him and seeking those things out, but also making sure that He's first. Hmm. So, how would you help um, somebody who's like, I want to make God first? How do, you, how do you do that? How do you put God first? I think that just reading the evidence that we have here um, of just all the miracles that God has created for us and just done throughout so many different people, um, just to realize how powerful that is and that um, He can do just immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine. So if somebody, you know, texts you and just said, Caroline, I'm really feeling stuck in my walk with God right now. Everything's just stale. I don't feel close to him. What would you say to encourage them? I would say just be still and remember that he is God. Yeah, Psalm 4610. That's the verse that always helped me just continue on because I start trying all these different things of devotions and scriptures I could read and groups I could join when sometimes it's better just to stay still and listen and hear what he has to say for what he wants from you. Yeah. So I want to I want to share a verse. It's in Galatians and it, it gives us a little glimpse into into God's heart here. It says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. So when you understand what's going on, Paul is the author of Galatians, and early on in Galatians, people are dealing with all these rules that they have to follow, all these regulations, the laws that they have to follow. And they're saying, well, to really know Christ better, you need to follow these rules, follow these laws, and then you could be free. And Paul's destroying that idea. He's saying, look, it's not about what you do. It's about what Christ has done. We can't earn it. It's a gift given to us. And so this is the glimpse that we get into God's heart is that it's for freedom that Christ has set you free, that he just wants you to be free for the purpose of, of living free, not, not because of what you've done, but because of what he's done. And because of our freedom, he then says, look, stand firm. Don't be burdened again to the yoke of slavery, specifically the yoke of slavery, like these rules that we think that we have to follow to be close, to earn God's favor, to have God like us, to have God love us. And Paul's saying, no, 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 no. Jesus loves you 
and wants to set you free. You might feel completely trapped, but God wants to set you free and do an incredible thing in and through you. But you have to trust that he has the ability and the capacity to set you free. Yes! Making it happen. So it's up close and, and personal. Uh, if you want to check the deck out, it's brand new. It's a little slippery there. Uh, but you really are. She definitely does not trust me. <laughs> let's, let's do this, Danny. Will you um, tell me when to stop whenever you want? Stop. Okay. Uh, if you want to keep going, you want to stop there? I have some more left. Uh, that's good. That's good. Okay, go ahead. Take that card. card. Yep. Uh, look at it. Show it to Tanner. Okay. Uh, now, I'm going to put these down. We're gonna try something with your card. So notice I have another deck of cards, a red deck of cards. These decks are connected in a, a way, like we're connected, right, in different ways, right? So what you do with that card will actually happen with this deck of cards. So let's just take it and turn it face up for a moment. Okay, so the six of diamonds. Now place it into the deck. Okay, hold on to that. Let's see if it happened this way. And remember, I gave you, I gave you a chance to change your mind. You're like, no, no, that's, that's what I want. Um, so let's just see. One card, I think that one's 29 cards down. This one's 29 as well. Oh, what? The six diamonds, okay. Let's, let's try this here. Will you grab, will you grab your, your six diamonds? I'm gonna um, put these back in the box, okay? It's going back in. Let's take your six of diamonds and watch. We're gonna take it, we're gonna just fold it. And then fold it in half again. It's like that. What do you think? I mean, maybe. Look. Can you see anything different in there? Yeah? Okay, hey look. You can see one card in there. Whoa. Here, uh, will you hold on to it just like that? Uh, let's do. Let's do this. Um, well, let me let me just open this um, up for a second. I'm gonna have. No, I, I am gonna have you hold on to this. So just hold on to it like this, and I'll I'll take this. Let's just take a corner off of this one. Go ahead, open that one up. Where's the other corner? Check your ear. No. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, freedom, we want to talk about freedom for a second and what it's not, because some people would say freedom's the ability to do whatever we want, when we want, how we want. But that's not freedom. And so, like that bird right there, Caroline. Oh yeah. Yeah, that bird. That bird. What about that bird? Talk to, talk to me about that bird. He's only free in the air. He can't just like waddle on down here. He's only free up in the blue sky. He can't just be waddling around on the ground? No. Why can't he be free on the ground? He got no waddlers. <laughs> he doesn't have waddlers? No waddlers. So, okay, uh, a worm, right? I, I don't have a worm around here. There's birds, but... Um, you know, a worm is only free, like when it's in the ground. It would constrain like most creatures, but God designed it so that a worm in the ground is most free right there. Uh, let's forget creatures for a second. What about, let's take uh, a train. A train's a good one. A train can only be free when it's on its tracks. It can't go off of the tracks and go all willy nilly everywhere. Willy nilly? Willy nilly. It's gotta stay on the tracks. Why does it have to stay on the tracks? Why can't it go willy-nilly? No willy-nilly for trains. <laughs> it's a law. All right. And Caroline and I, you, right? You're only free when you're moving in the sphere for which God has created you. You can't just do whatever you want whenever you want. You do what God wants and you're going to experience freedom. You're going to experience peace. And you're going to know what it's like to, to be who God's designed you to be. So um, Tanner, reach in it and grab one out, okay? And what I want you to do, Danny, is I want you to look at that and name a card. You can look at it and show it to the camera. 
and name a card that's different from that. So if it's like a six of diamonds, like you had earlier, name like a, a king of spades or queen of clubs. If it's, uh, you know, a, a king, so it contrasts really well. Um, what, what card do you want to name? Uh, seven of spades. Seven of spades. I just saw the, the seven of clubs, but let's see if we can find the seven of spades. Okay, so the, the seven of spades. Here's what I'm gonna, I'm going to do is I'm going to have you put your hand on top of the, the seven of spades. So, uh, so here, put your hand on top and then put your other hand on top. And actually, uh, Tanner, let's do this. I'm going to take your, what do you have? The two of hearts, put your hand on top and put your other hand on top trapped underneath. Now you, what card you had seven of seven of spades. Watch one, two, three. There it is. Now I have the seven of spades. Go ahead, lift up. Show it to the cameras at the two oh, hearts. <laughs> so seriously, you might feel like you're trapped right now. You might feel like you were just like buried underneath those hands. The weight of the world might feel like it's on you, but God wants to come in and set you free. It's what he does is he has designed you to be free and that we spend our lives like trying to work towards freedom. We're trying to earn it. And God just wants to give you the gift of freedom, but we have to receive it. The way we receive it is we just say, God, I surrender all to you. I give my life to you. Would you come in inside of me and his spirit will come inside and transform you from the inside out. What lies are you digesting? Yeah, let's get this. Oh. Pizza is a vegetable. Eh, it's only one lie. My parents will never find out. Everybody does it. It's, it's not, not a big, a big deal. deal. It, it only affects, affects me. me. I can stop any time I want. I will, I will never, never be, be free. free. The lies we feed ourselves affect every choice we make. One of the things I love about Jesus is he gets into the middle of our craziness, into the middle of our mess. And in John chapter five, there's this great story where Jesus is going up to a festival and there's the gate sheep and it's, it's this place, it's a pool and it's surrounded by five colonnades. So it, it's this beautiful area, but there's all of these people and you'll see in verse three, it says, there's a great number of disabled people used to lie here, blind and the lame and the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid, so he's not able to like move without other people helping him for 30 eight years, like that's a long time, 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him a question. This question's powerful. And I want you to think about whatever situation you might find yourself in, right? What, what's the pain you're in? What's the struggle you're in? It might feel like you've been there for a long time. This guy's been there for 38 years. Like that is a long time. But Jesus asked him this question. He says, do you want to get well? I wonder what you would say if he was to look you in your eyes and say, do you want to get well? What would your response be? This man's answer was this. Well, I, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. When I'm trying to get in, someone goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once he was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. That's the power of what Jesus could do is he has the power to instantly transform our lives. Sometimes he does things instantly. Sometimes it's a lifetime journey of the transformation process. But here's the question. Do you want to get well? This guy, he didn't say yes. He said, well, I don't really have time. And Ray, these guys don't help me or I'm not fast enough. I wonder what excuses you would put out for why you're not well. 
God wants to set you free. Whatever situations you're trapped in, maybe you're trapped in like your need to have approval. Maybe you're trapped in like some sort of addiction, maybe addiction to pornography or addiction to a drug of whatever your choice is. Or maybe you're just like struggling with peer pressure, whatever it is, God knows your story. He's never gonna give up on you and he wants to set you free. So I wanna give you a few ways that you could live for him and learn what it's like to be free. Stop living in a world where we're trapped and know what it's like to be free. The first thing is this, is we have to live distraction free. Like Caroline's in, in God's word right now is you have to take time every day and carve out maybe seven minutes. If you've never done this before, you've never spent time alone, just being silent without any other distractions around, just with God. I would encourage you, maybe you take the, the book of John and you go through the book of John and just every day you read until something just grabs you. And then think about that verse. Think about those words. Think about how Jesus wants to speak into your life, but you're never going to hear from God if you're not still before him. The second thing is this, is we need to train ourselves to be godly. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says this, have nothing to do with godless myths or old wife's tales. In other words, there's things you've heard, things you've believed that just aren't true. Rather, train yourself to be godly for physical training is of some value but godliness has value for all things holding promise for both the present life and the life to come so we have to learn to train ourselves to be godly let me just give you a picture of physical training that we know i can't do push-ups for you right your mom and dad can't do push-ups or hold um, your faith for you right? We're responsible for our own faith, our own actions. And so we learn to be spiritually fit and we train ourselves to be like God. So get ready for a deep thought. Prepare yourself. Are you prepared, Caroline? I mean, oh yeah, we need, oh yeah, we need, yeah, get ready. Yeah. So a deep thought, get ready. Here it is. Like get your mind ready for this one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that skipped so I can like, there we go, I've got it. <laughs> That's me. Scared me. Scared me, scared me. Uh, so number three, number three, number three is this, is we have to understand we are in a war, a real war, real battle, and it's a spiritual battle. And there is an enemy who wants to take us down. We can't let him. We've got to um, engage in this battle. And the way we engage is on our knees. When first Peter five, seven, there's a very familiar verse. It says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. This is one of those like, key verses that a lot of us just live by and we, we work on casting our anxiety on him. But the very next part of it says this, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So we have to understand we need to cast our cares on him because we have this enemy. We are engaged in a real battle and the only way to win is by consistently connecting with our God, letting him work in and through us and we engage daily in this battle and it happens on our knees. Yes, God doesn't want you to be trapped anymore. 
Whatever your situation, he wants to free you. And this is the thing, is God himself is the key. It's not about what we do, it's about what he does. It's not about us coming up with solutions, it's that he is the solution, he is the way, he is the way out. And we don't have to earn it, we don't have to do our best, all we do is we follow him daily, we surrender to him, and we trust that Jesus has paid it all to set us free. So we trust him, we walk with him, we live for him.